Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Hard West with me, Bring It Down. Check out the Necropolis. Tar Pit Necropolis. He arrived in an area dominated by sinkholes and mud pits. It served as a graveyard of sorts, allowing coffins to simply sink into the bog was highly economical. Your reflections were interrupted by the sight of a tall figure pacing back and forth across the necropolis. In the morning mist of the surreal landscape, he looked like an apparition. Dressed in all black and carrying a shovel, looked as though he must be an undertaker. The rumors like the rumors about like that hunting for you were true. This man could be dangerous. He tried to find out his identity. The man's blank greeting turned to excitement as he realized who you were. His name was Shane Carter Holmes. He recognized you from your hunt for the masked man. Between coffins and funeral services, your one-man slaughterhouse routine, as he called it, it made him a pretty penny. He'd been looking for you for weeks to express his thanks. He handed you a stack of useful items, including some cash and a piece of the meteor. Uh, we'll just keep it for now. Alright, uh, have we been here before? Alright, I guess we'll go to the brothel next. Grabbed at a well-maintained farm composed of several large bungalows, all with extensive red lighting. Emma Bye Bye's debaucherous establishment was known for its security. The place was guarded by the same women who worked the clients. Only a fool would cross them. And you went to the main lobby. The brothel was a large complex. A gaggle of gunslingers hung around in its bar. The kitchen behind the counter led to an open courtyard, but you were forbidden from going there. You were allowed in the lobby, where the women watched you with distrust, while doing their best to look seductive. And my bye bye, the establishment's madam, remained in her office. And you returned to the bar. The bar is about as busy as the private rooms, with the women working both as bouncers and waitresses. You notice some va vaqueros sitting around a table. If you're picking fights, then fellas can be a heap of trouble. Apart from them, though, it was mainly old ranchers gambling and sipping their booze. Can you asked what they had on tap. Nothing we need. Why would I get into a fight? Alright, you bought a round of drinks for everyone in the bar to lighten the mood and keep them out of the fight. Your generous offer met with cheering and murmurs. The Vicaros particularly appreciated the gesture, but about rehydrating themselves with tequila. You asked the barmaid if the name Randy Harden rang any bells. When the girl made a face, you knew you hit the jackpot. She pointed to a building across the farm. Harden was there, she said, obtained on orders from the wizard himself, which no one could figure since Harden had been the wizard's lieutenant for years. She pulled you in close and said she thought it was because Harden was a diseased husk of a man, no longer fit for any real job. She said if you wanted to see him, to talk to Madame uh, Bye Bye. Her breath hot on your neck. Guess whether you wanted anything else. I'm back to the lobby. Now you asked to talk to the madam. James Rusk, Emma Bye Bye's assistant, let you through the door and followed close behind you. The room was adorned with paper mache decorations in China. In the center of the room, like a dare, stood a massive safe cabinet. You heard someone clear her throat, turned to see Emma Bye Bye looking at you disapprovingly. You asked the price of Hardin's freedom. Emma Bye Bye looked at her assistant. The two started giggling. They burst out and laugh into laughter. You attempted to shut their mouths with a gun. In your consternation, Bye Bye explained. Uh, she only did business with important people. You mentioned your role in the masked man's untimely death. Now, the madam said that hardly compared to being a trusted ally of the wizard and the leader of a feared and respected organization. You wondered aloud whether she was confusing the word ally with henchman. She looked at you dispassionately as she lit a cigarette in a long slender filter. She asked why you're interested in a worthless son of a motherless goat like Hardin. She inquired as to whether you ran a charity for cripples and hobos. Yeah, with lightning swiftness, you pulled the assistant's gun from his holster and shot him in the stomach. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not pulling punches here. I'm on a mission.
things didn't go exactly as planned. Despite the odds, you still needed to get Harden out of there. All right, throwing in an edit. A uh, few mistakes were made. Hopefully things go better this time. Also, I don't know why, whenever we restart the mission, we start with one less health. I think it doesn't count the health that you get from the cards when you restart. Which is a little frustrating, because one health can make a world of difference in this game. He was bound to be hit eventually. A little dangerous, because I know there's going to be enemies that come from this direction. Her right there. A oh, flank shot. On our protagonist. But I do have a plan. Not exactly how I wanted it to go down. So we'll do it like that instead. I was hoping Cervantes would be in a flanking position for this guy, but he's not quite there. Uh, Pablo Del Pancho. There we go, problem solved. Hang in there, Cervantes.
I don't like that one bit. You see, your characters don't get attacks of opportunity like the enemies do. I find super frustrating. Oh, she's behind cover. Gosh darn it. They registered that. Oh, never mind. It's fine. We'll probably be okay. Enemies here. We should be able to kill this guy. for another round. I think I should shoot her from here. That should count as a flank shot. All right, that's super dangerous. Uh, let's get back in there behind cover. I'm going to risk that. my chance. That's a really dumb move. to do is worry about the enemy that's standing right here at this window. But it doesn't like she's going to push me, so I should be able to go around here and get a flank shot on her without any issue. At least that's the plan.
Oh, here we go. Alright, so there was a woman guarding Harden. I don't know if she's still in there, if she ran out to kill us. I'll probably just look over here. Oh yeah, she's still up there. Alright, play it slow. We don't want to overcommit. Without knowing what's lying around the next corner. Did a hundred percent chance to hit Harden's guard was strong and imposing. You couldn't release Harden with her around. Free from his binds, Harden thanked you and cursed those who betrayed him. Of course, he had no idea why you freed him in the first place. But it was time to leave. Alright, so everything's starting to come together. All the characters from the other scenarios are congregating in this one. All right, plus two movement, we'll give that to Cervantes. Plus four sight, I guess we're just gonna give that to him. HP, defense, and luck. And HP. He has a volcano pistol. Don't care for that. In fact, probably swap these around. We'll do that instead. All right, uh, to the church. Right, so let's go to the Cougar Trails first. The swampland was Indian property. The rumors were true. A powerful native mystic lived here who could take the form of a cougar. It was said he possessed another piece of the meteor. Uh, you looked for tracks. Many hours later, uh, as you were about to give up, you spotted the cougar. It looked ordinary except for an unusual pattern on its face, and a necklace with a piece of rock tied to it. You laid down the amulet in front of you, offering a trade for the meteor shard. Now you shot it between the eyes. The cougar dodged the bullet and leapt at you, knocking you to the ground. The two of you rolled around the hillside as you desperately reached for the boot, your boot knife. Finally, you got it loose and slid it between two of the beast's ribs. You sustained grave wounds in the struggle, but the meteor piece was yours. Alright, so we're getting a little messed up. I think I need to... He needs to be healed. He's in a bad... He's in a bad way. So let's go take care of that next. Make sure we're all equipped with stuff. Uh, let's see, Vitality Elixir. Put that 
that as well. Let's see. Yeah, that works for me. All right, uh, to the church. Local chapel used a piece of the meteor as the main jewel adorning its communion chalice. A uh, Viker Vigar? It's Vigar. A uh, Simon Sams. The locals respectfully called Bishop. Refused to surrender the stone. Zavantes took Sams aside and explained that he needed to commandeer the chalice for a greater cause. Vikar squirmed, but gave up the chalice without further objection. You had all the meteor pieces you wanted. When you returned to the main road, a messenger handed you a letter from the wizard. The man wasn't happy with your stun at the brothel, but he provided the location of persons as per your agreement. It was a trap. It wasn't the first you were willingly walking into. Let's go to the Rojas Tannery next. The stench of tanning liquids was smothering. The tanner was rumored to possess a piece of the meteor, so you pressed on. We told him you were looking for. He shrugged. He had once used the piece in the tanning vat to speed up the reaction. Now though, he found a reliable source of the tanning catalyst that didn't need the meteor anymore. Unfortunately for you, however, it lay at the bottom of a vat full of toxic material. Uh, you were desperate enough. You could simply reach for it. Uh, you cursed and gave it a shot. You put your hand in the vat, in the bottom for the stone. Your hand only felt a little warm, then you finally found the meteor shard withdrew it. You were severely burned. Absorbed it, but we got swiftness, so it was worth it. Uh, is there anything else to explore? The necropolis was, was as muddy and gloomy as you remembered it. I uh, took a look at the memorial board. A memorial board listing the souls that had been sunk into the bog, were slowly rotting in, in the damp air. The only names you could make out were John Doe, Jansen Rush, Nick Rogers, and Andrew the Drifter, born 1883. All right, to Lookout Hill. The old four offered strong defensive positions to whoever managed to get there first. No need to come for persons. The wizard set up an ambush with his best men. You deduced his scheme, however, and you just had to decide if you wanted to attack now, or let them stew a while. You decided to attack. We should be all set. You told persons would be here. Don't bother to specify whether he'd be alive. Even the wizard's best men couldn't stop you. Stealing the opium stash would add insult to injury. Alright, another edit. Once again, things did not go my way. Uh, these women up here... Are they using elephant rifles? They don't miss. So I think I'm going to try and push in a different direction altogether. I tried holding the line and it just it did not did not work out. down. A solid start. Alright, they don't see him. They can't shoot and move at the same time.
but I've got a plan. Not very good odds. All right, let's grab the first dash. You recovered a supply of opium. We'll get there. Slowly but surely. Especially if they just keep walking out in the open like that. So we can make our way around this side. And to the fort from here. And I do think that's our best bet. The longer I can avoid those elephant gun wielding enemies, then uh better chance that I have. Because <laughs> they they wrecked us the first time around. And this turn, I want this guy to catch up with uh, the rest of the party before we push forward. That would be ideal. There is an enemy right there. Let's see if we can take care of him first. really banking on there being no enemies back on the uh, back side of the fort. Thankfully I was right. Here we go. I didn't realize opium gave you that much health. That is absurd.
Alright, I do see the enemy over there. Uh, that gives me some concern. I might just have him run inside over here. Play it safe for a turn. See, they, they don't miss. And they do two damage behind full cover. Alright, not a fan of either one of those being up here. Let's see. 60, 53. Darn. Really wanted it to land. The up only lasts for one turn as well. That's not good. Uh, we just gotta run up here. Screw it. Let's get persons in the fight. Persons thanked you politely for the rescue. He was eager to fight back against his oppressors. In fact, he refused to leave until they were all dead. That's three for three. That's why I lost the first time, because I was trying to hold the line right here behind this full cover, and it just it didn't work out. <laughs> it was it was an awful experience. Miguel Air Amo. Amoso Oqua? Doubt I said that right. We have Shadow Kill. Only three left. Oh, she did miss her shot. Hey, she missed her shot, finally. Alright, please take her out. It's about time. Almost. All right, musket power. Every persons inhaled deeply, enjoying the smell of fresh blood and spent gunpowder. 
His contented smile was a clear indication of how truly insane he was. The dust settled after the battle. He was there. The stranger who had halted your death. The man who told you to kill and burn. You knew now, from the cold feeling in your bones, who he must be. He applauded your efforts in bringing together this posse, and said you had only one more task ahead of you before you could invade Purgatory. Confront the wizard, and force him to reveal how to get there. He said that first you had a question for him. With a wry grin he replied, Shoot. He said he had a good reason to invade Purgatory, true love. He snorted at this. But you continued. You couldn't figure his angle for the life of you. He knew he always had an angle. It was simple, he replied. He said the natural order of things was the most vicious crime ever perpetrated on mankind. It turned men into slaves who crawled from cradle to grave in servitude, their pathetic existences hardly qualifying as life at all. Chaos, on the other hand, showed mankind's full potential. Where there were madmen, there were geniuses. Where there were the most depraved villains, the greatest heroes rose. To upset the status quo was mankind's greatest calling. And there was no greater bastion of the status quo than purgatory. He had been grooming you as his champion all this time, he said, and now the end was in sight. Once you forced the wizard to show you the way to purgatory, you could end mankind's servitude forever. It was your final test. All right, we did get a couple of things there. Some more aim would be great for him. Movement would be great for him. And some luck. I guess that's good for now. We did get a new weapon. Judge, we'll give this to him. Have the musket, and you can have this. Alright, we will have to go buy some healing before we go to the next fight. Oh, uh, where's a good trader at? I guess here. But for now, I'm going to call the episode, and in the next one, we'll go confront the wizard and see if we can't make our way into Purgatory, which is located over here, if I'm not mistaken. But for now, thanks for watching. I hope to see you guys in the next one.